Veterans Park gets an upgrade, a new app for Lexington visitors, and more on workforce grants. This and more up next on this week's edition of Lexington Now. I'm Neil Noah and welcome to Lexington Now for the week of October 15th, 2018. Veterans Park has gotten an upgrade in the form of a new state-of-the-art playground. We were there for the official opening. Well, it's great to be with you all this morning here in Veterans Park. I want to welcome Councilmember Susan Lamb. Councilmember Susan Lamb and Kathy Plowman represent the neighborhoods surrounding Veterans Park. And we are here to celebrate these new playground it's not just a playground but it's playground pods right monica yes so you take the trail and the kids will get all kinds of playground activities along the trail out here so this is a new concept that we're employing that we're initiating and uh, monica i really want to thank you for your leadership in not only this, but in elevating our parks and making them more welcoming to all of our citizens. Pam, you're out here walking. You said you come out every day, don't you? With your, with your, now what are their names? Nina? Alex, Nina, and Rusty. Alex, Nina, and Rusty. There we go. And Jane, thank you for joining us this morning too. All right. This playground is one of many, as I've already said, that we've repaired or replaced across our city in the last few years. We've made it a priority to make sure that the playground equipment is safe and accessible to all children. And this includes new playgrounds in Jacobson Park, Valley Park, Douglas Park, and Kennewood, among several others. These, neighborhoods and these neighborhood investments improve quality of life in our city. And that's a big deal. And why is that? Because quality of life is what people are looking for today. They're looking for quality of life wherever they choose to live. The original Veterans Park Playground, you all may remember, was built in the 80s. It was a wooden playground and they were very popular then. Still standing in, that was the last, and the one here was the last one that was standing in our parks. Lots of reasons that they were removed, but primarily it was associated with safety. Now we have this modern playground that engages children of different ages, different interests. So Susan, now folks in your district have another reason to enjoy Veterans Park. I am so pleased to be here today to help officially open these new playground pieces in Veterans Park. This part is truly this park is truly a treasure of Lexington and continues to gain more and more amenities and attention. I'm happy to have half a dozen city parks in my district and Veterans Park is a special one. It as it houses the tribute to our military services members who like no other in the city. <clears throat> and I know there are many families with children in the surrounding neighborhoods who will enjoy this great new park playground feature. But I also know many who come from outside the immediate area to visit the park's baseball fields, walking paths, and the natural beauty. Who can, who can now have another fun opportunity for their children? And all of our parks are maintained and offer many amenities and programs. This would, would not be possible without the support of the administration, thank you, Mayor, and without our Division of Parks staff which we have several here today and they have made this a beautiful place for us to have this uh, ribbon cutting today and they're amazing employees we have such a professional staff and i'm proud of them and thank them for all of their hard work and thank you thanks thank you mayor gray for your continued support and engagement with our parks you know i've said this before but our mayor truly gets it he gets the impact that these parks have on our community and the quality of life here in Lexington. Council Member Lamb is another one who gets it. We're so fortunate that she is here with us today. The planning and design, project management and maintenance teams, some of which are with us today, have been working to spruce up our playgrounds throughout the city. In addition to this awesome new playground here at Veterans Park, we've also replaced playgrounds at Cardinal Valley Park, 
and at Kennewood. And we'll soon unveil new plans for Shillitoe Park and Rockbridge here on the other side of Veterans Park. With over 100 parks in our community, continued enhancements to improve our quality of life for our residents, strengthen our city's neighborhoods, and preserve and enhance our environment for generations to come. In addition to our playgrounds, parks have many opportunities for you to get out and play this fall. We've got Little Goblins Galore this weekend at McConnell Springs, or October 20th, join us for Sunrise Archery at Heisel Park. Thank you again for being here today, and I'll turn it back over to the mayor. Great. Monica, thank you. And, I'm, and uh, thanks again to all the Parks and Rec employees, you, you guys, and I'm, of course, saying that gender neutral. Everybody in, the, everybody in Parks and Rec, you know, you, got, you all have a smile and a sparkle in the eye, pep in the step that really excites others, and we appreciate, appreciate you all for that leadership. Thanks so much. Three, one. Two, three. Woo All right. There we go. A new app has been unveiled for Visit Lex. Mayor Jim Gray joined other officials for the announcement. The, uh, the growth of Fusion Corp and of the spinoff, Gamify, really says a lot about our community and about Lexington. I want to, too, thank Commerce Lexington. It's been great working with Jenna and her team for the last eight years and before that even. Uh, they do an outstanding job making everyone feel welcome and that's a big deal. I also want to thank our Chief Development Officer who I've worked with for eight years. Another outstanding guy and I want you all to join me in thanking Kevin Atkins because Kevin... <laughs> his desk is right he has to suffer really because his desk is literally right behind mine in the big open office and he has learned he has really learned well how to just sort of suffer with me and ignore me a lot of the times but I appreciate you Kevin I appreciate everything you've done um, we are also where's Mary Quinn I know she was here right there Mary Quinn and visit Lex you guys have got a new app right and it is called Visit, Visit Lex, Lex Experience. Experience. Yeah, you need to, I'm sure that's on the paper. I was just getting, a, I was just getting some crowd interaction here. You know. Uh, well, we're excited. That we're excited about that. I know if Mary Quinn has endorsed it, then I know that it's a good deal. So thanks for that too. Congratulations to Fusion Corp, to Gamify, to the entire team. We are excited about everything that you all are doing. It's, as I said right at the beginning, it's symbolic and it represents what else is going on in our city. And for you guys to make that kind of endorsement, those of us who are involved in City Hall, like Councilmember Susan Lamb, Councilmember Joe Smith, we all appreciate it enormously. And finally, I will say that you know, this is another great example of a company, a growing company, who has participated in our jobs fund and is already paying back on the loan that they got through the jobs fund. And we are excited about that as well because that allows us to invest in other businesses. So, Michael, thank you so much. So, um, you know, I have to point out everybody over here that's, I think the whole team's over here, but, um, you know, thank you guys. It was crazy, dude. Uh, so, like, um, you know, every day we come to work and we, we fight the good fight as a small business. We have hurdles like every small business has, but I just appreciate you guys kind of standing with us, standing behind us as we keep pushing forward. So. Um, now, to kind of introduce the, um, what was the name of the app again? Oh, the Visit Lex, Lex experience. experience. Yeah, the Visit Lex experience. Yeah. So um, the Visit Lex experience is uh, a Gamify product, the spin out, spin out company Gamify. And so what the Visit Lex experience is, is it's a scavenger hunt. It uses augmented reality. It's a wayfinding. It's a tour around the city, a walking tour around the city. And it's brand new technology, and it's really cool. And we are having interest all over the country from major cities all over the country about installing this and we're just really excited that Lexington, Kentucky is the first one for all these major cities out there to have this type of experience. So um, 
download the app. It's the Visit Lex experience. It starts in the visitor center uh, and it'll take you on a walking tour. There's some 3D elements. We turn some murals to life, like the Lincoln mural. We have Mr. Tom Martin here who is well, honest Abe himself. Um, so anyway, just want to say thank you very much. Appreciate everybody coming out today. Just want to reiterate that, uh, you know, at VisitLex, our mission is, is to market and promote Lexington's bluegrass region for the purpose of attracting visitors to help grow the economy. So in 2017, the economic impact of Kentucky's tourism ministry grew to more than $15 billion, but supported more than 15,000 jobs here in Fayette County alone. So through our organization's sales and marketing and service uh, opportunities and our efforts, you know, we've helped firm it further cement uh, Lexington as the premier destination for horses and bourbon, and now we're trying to position ourselves at the forefront of technology and tourism. So in recent years, travel has shifted, and visitors are now looking for a more hands-on, personalized experience when they visit a destination, and that's going to start with their mobile devices. So they're looking to experience you know, a destination like a local through interactive experiences like scavenger hunts and walking tours. And what this new augmented reality experience does, it takes the traditional methods of a walking tour and a scavenger hunt and then combines that with new immersive technology that appeals to, to a younger generation of travelers that are also going to be the fastest growing segment of travelers in our industry. So we believe that the augmented reality it has the potential to enhance all of our current tourism experiences through new modes of gamification, storytelling, and visitor servicing. So we we just like to thank Michael and the team at Gamify. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize Mary Quinn, our president, who allows uh, us to do these uh, unique and opportun unique opportunities to set the vision for for travel and tourism for Lexington. And we just really look forward to working with all of our other partners in the city to help further share the story of Lexington as a premier travel destination. Thank you. After the break, another installment of our Workforce Grant series. We have an abundance of beauty and natural resources here in the bluegrass. More miles of running water than any state in the continental U.S. You may not know it, but all our creeks and streams catch water directly from storm sewers on our streets. That means when someone tosses a cigarette butt on Main or Vine, chances are good it'll end up in Town Branch. Leave some pet waste on a sidewalk near Versailles Road, it goes into Wolf Run Creek. So please, don't trash the bluegrass. I'm Sergeant Randall Combs with the Lexington Police Traffic Unit. Accessible parking is a valuable and necessary resource for people with disabilities. And that includes the striped area next to accessible parking spots. These are access aisles, and it is illegal to park here, even if you have an accessible parking permit. Access aisles are necessary for me to get into my vehicle. They are there because many of us need that space to use our ramps or to transfer into a wheelchair. It's frustrating when a car is parked in the access aisle because I don't have room to get into my van. Police and Lexpark are writing tickets when they see vehicles parked in an access aisle, and the fine is $250. Know where and where not to park. Keep the access aisles clear. Thank you and drive safe. Welcome back to Lexington Now. Lexington's Workforce Grants Program is designed to help those who are facing barriers to employment. Here's the latest in our series produced by Brett Smith. I was driving, coming down the highway and I told my son I needed a job and I guess I come off 64 and OWL was first, first place in mind. <laughs> I stopped in and filled out an application and, and, they, and they hired me, even with some of all the stuff I've been through. I was pretty much um, just living in the streets, or, you know, uh, wanting to do things that probably were going to uh, wind me up in prison or dead, you know, because uh, it was hard to get a job, I guess, uh, being a felon. So, uh, They've helped a lot. The whole mission for OWL is to provide uh, employment opportunities and other life training experiences for individuals that have some kind of barrier to employment. I work currently at NSG and I drive the forklift every day and we transport the glass for all the vehicles from the warehouse 
to the assembly line. The focus of this whole program is not only to provide them job skills, but also provide them with those essential skills that every employer is looking for in today's employment world. Especially with the unemployment rates being so low, uh, they want people that are work ready. At Al and LMC, we make sure that our people are work ready when they leave here. I got to NSG mainly through OWL. I got my forklift training, got certified here at OWL, and from OWL and NSG needed forklift drivers, and OWL sent me there. I interviewed, filled out the application, did everything, tested, and NSG hired me. Through each of these training programs, we're allowed to focus in on some unmet needs within our community that are skills that people can take with them and get the training here and then go into our community and find better jobs, ma making more money, becoming better self-sufficient. This is a good example of what William did. When he came and entered our program, he got the basic forklift training here. Then he went to NSG and got a full-time job with benefits, making a very livable wage. Yes, I'm full-time, NSG, benefits, vacation, everything is beautiful. My goals for the future, wow, they seem to change every day, but I would say I'm planning on working at NSG approximately four or five years, and my goal is to try and start my own business. But I've got three sons, and I've always wanted to start a business to allow them to have a place to work and, you know, just be a family, I guess. Uh, I am an apprentice installer for HVAC equipment. Primarily I'll install ductwork in new houses or change out old equipment in existing homes. Uh, I got hired through my teacher at the Building Industry Association. Uh, before this I was working in retail for about eight years. Mostly stocking shelves and uh, working on the register, helping customers. Working about 25 hours a week in retail to 40 plus here. You know, it's, it's, a, it's work that I enjoy a lot more. I, I don't dread coming into work every day. It's, uh, it's been a lot nicer. It's definitely a lot more physical, physically intensive work. You have to move heavy equipment. You have to kind of crawl into attics. You have to deal with very warm environments. It's something you just uh, you work towards and overcome. Last year uh, at the Building Institute School for HVAC, Andrew come aboard. I had the privilege of meeting and teaching him through his first year. And I actually gave the students a secret interview. They didn't know they were actually being interviewed for a job, but they were. And I had the opportunity. Andrew did the best out of the whole class. So I offered him a job that night. And he has been with me ever since. Starting in September, I'll be going back to school. For the moment, I'd like to work towards getting into service, learning as much as I can, and just seeing how far I can grow and progress. This is the last week to check out Paint by Nature at Lexington's Pam Miller Downtown Arts Center. It's an art exhibit celebrating Lexington's waterways. This is the Paint by Nature Streamside exhibit currently on display at the Pam Miller Downtown Arts Center through October 21st. It is a partnership between Environmental Services and Art Connects and it's a way to highlight different green spaces and streamside restoration projects in Lexington. This project was actually the brainchild of Dawn Schroyer. She was a member of the inaugural class of the Citizens Environmental Academy. And while the project didn't fit within the scope that we had for the Environmental Academy projects, we loved it and worked with Dawn to have it become reality. On the walls around me, you'll see 72 different pieces of art by 60 artists, highlighting 13 greenways in Lexington. In Kentucky, we're very blessed that we have so much running water. We have more miles of running water than anywhere else um, other than Alaska. And so um, the colors that we get of green are amazing. Walking down to Veterans Park, I'd been there many times and um, never knew that the creek ran through it. And so my husband and I walked down there to photograph and um, it was just beautiful, the lines and the reflection of the lines in the trees, uh, in the water, and uh, the late evening sun where uh, the sun filtered through the leaves and created this yellow glow, and um, it was just amazing. When I painted it, I 
laid in my dark lines of the trees and the lines in the reflection in the water. And then I went back with seven layers of perspective from farthest away to closest in, in layers of painting. And um, that's what we've got. My decision to, uh, to paint and paint by nature, I love the outdoors first of all, and I had a friend tell me about paint by nature, and I thought it was a great idea so that we could showcase parts of Lexington that don't often get seen, especially streams and, and little lakes. We don't have that many in Lexington, so I thought it would be a great opportunity to kind of feature some parts of Lexington that don't often get seen. I had visited it before, driven by it many times and walked through it a few times. We actually brought my dog and my daughter out there while I painted. I painted for about a half an hour live, plein air, and then I took my reference photos back to the studio and painted because it was a really, really warm day. But it has good visibility from Cross Keys and so I thought, oh, that'd be a great spot to kind of feature and highlight. Paint by Nature is a complimentary program to our plant by numbers, which was just launched this summer. It is a template for folks who may not be very confident or familiar with gardening to actually choose which plants. We have these available at several local nurseries and garden shops, so they can take it around with them and choose plants. Here in the exhibit, we have an interactive game, so you know, looking at a picture sometimes doesn't give you a very accurate idea. You can map it out and see what it might actually look like in your yard. Throughout the remainder of the Paint by Nature exhibit, we have a few special events happening. This exhibit is at the Pam Miller Downtown Art Center. It will be on display through October 21st, and there is more information available at lexingtonky.gov slash paintbynature. The exhibit is open through the 21st. We have three meetings being covered this week on Lex TV. First is the Planning and Public Safety Committee meeting, followed by Council Work Session, both on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, we have gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of the Rural Land Management Board's meeting. These meetings will be live on Channel 185 and on our live stream, and you can find any televised meeting archived at lexingtonky.gov slash lextv, or find our other programming here or on YouTube channel LexTV. That's all for this week. Keep up with us on social media and check out the latest traffic updates on Twitter at LexRex or catch our live traffic cams on LexingtonKY.gov. For the staff and producers at LexTV, I'm Neil Noah, and that's it for now.